Welcome to another full furniture makeover. Today I'm going to be taking this laminate piece and showing you how to make painting the impossible possible by using our Ultra Grip by Fusion Mineral Paint. I'm going to then also add some amazing color to it, completely change the look, and add a stencil to the drawer fronts using our smooth embossing paste so you get a raised textured technique. So join me, follow along, I'm going to walk you through every single step. This piece was a Value Village find for $14.99. I feel like this is gonna be a great side table or even a piece in an office where you can store uh, papers and all that kind of stuff. So you can see there's a lot of wear and tear on the top. There's a lot of gouges and scrapes and it's had excessive damage to it. So I'm gonna cover that up actually by using the embossing paste after with a stencil. It's a really great tip if you wanna try and fix something that just doesn't look so great, but the structure and the bones are in great condition. Um, okay, so this, I already took off the hardware at the bottom here, but the first thing to do to this piece is to give it a clean with our TSP alternative. We don't know what kind of dirt or grime or grease is on here. Again, this came from a thrift store and uh, who knows what's happened to it. So always step number one, clean with TSP alternative and it's phosphate free. You just mix two capfuls of this into some water and you give it a wipe down and you let it dry. It takes about five minutes to dry and then you're good to go and paint. It is a rinse free formula because it is actually phosphate free. So be sure that you use our TSP alternative. It's an organic alternative to the phosphate TSPs that are out there. So a really, really wonderful product. So that's already been cleaned and it's good to go. But there is something on here. There's a price sticker and that is really, really sticky. I also noticed some other sticky stuff here. So what we wanna do with that is remove the sticker. So what might happen though, is you end up with some sticky residue left behind and that is not gonna be very friendly to paint adhering to it. So we're gonna remove the excess sticky stuff with the uh, odorless solvent. This one actually came off pretty good because it's a laminate. Laminate is so um, smooth that the sticker came off really easily. But if this was like real wood, you probably have more of it sticking in there. And if that sticker was on there for like a year or two, it'd be even more difficult to remove. So I'm just going to grab my odorless solvent. There we go. Now our odorless solvent is a really fantastic product alternative to mineral spirits out there. It's basically an, an odorless mineral spirit. Um, so you're not gonna have those harmful, toxic aromatics that you get in a lot of mineral spirits. You just put a little bit on a cloth and then whoops, and then just kind of rub in that area where that sticker was. And that's just to ensure that if there's anything sticky still left on there, it's not going to stay on there. And we'll be able to paint over that now. So again, this is a rinse free formula too. Like you don't have to rinse or do anything to this once it's done and that's it. So we'll just use a little bit. This is also really great for uh, removing wax from a piece that may have been previously waxed because you can't paint over top of wax. Um, or if you've used like uh, stain and finishing oil on your brush or wax on your brush and you want to clean that, this is a great product to use to remove that as well. We're going to take off the hardware and as we took off this hardware, I actually realized it's plastic. So we can paint it. If it was metal, we could paint it. Or we might just choose completely new hardware. I'm not really sure yet what we're gonna do with it, but we're gonna set it to the side for now. And remember, we've already cleaned this piece with our TSP. So now we're going to our next step, which is Ultra Grip. So Ultra Grip is for painting the impossible. We typically recommend this product for melamine, thermofoils, some Ikea surfaces that are really difficult. Some laminates can be particularly difficult as well. And not, not all of them, but I really like using this surface as an example for how to apply this. Because if you use a brush to apply this, what can happen is you can actually get a little bit of brush strokes because it really holds texture and it dries really quickly. So instead, I'm gonna show you on this flat surface how to use both a sponge and a roller, this microfiber, very fine roller from Stalmeister, which are the ultimate 
rollers. These are worth every single penny. I love them so much. Hands down, best, best rollers for applying the paint. The tough coat as well, or ultra grip. So really multifunctional. Okay, so I'm going to pour into this tray to work from because you wouldn't want to pour onto your surface because if you have too much, the problem is you're going to create texture and leave excess on your surface. You don't want that. We want a super thin, thin, thin application with our Ultra Grip. So I'm just going to pour it into the bottom here. We really don't need too much. Okay, put that back there. Um, let's start with the roller first. So fresh new roller. I'm just going to kind of load it up get it all around there and wipe off, or roll off the excess rather. And with this product, it goes on pretty clear. Sometimes it has like a purple blue haze to it, but it will dry completely clear. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll that on. See how you kind of see a bit of a different color to it. And the key with this very, very thin application, you do not need a lot for this to work. There we go. And I think maybe some people, because it's clear, will accidentally put too much on because they want to see it. That's where you start to create that texture and those uh, sort of brush strokes. And even with this super fine roller, you do want to make sure that you don't use too much product. Like if you see the product on there, it's too much. You want just a super, super, super thin layer. So as you see, that was a really quick and easy application. Um, you certainly may not need Ultra Grip on all of your pieces. It's really only for the very, very shiny surfaces that you can't scuff sand. Like if you have a really ornate detailed piece that's high, high gloss, um, I would say use it on there. So that way the paint sticks really well. Uh, thermofoil, melamine, some Ikea surfaces, and some laminates. This is kind of like your 100% insurance guarantee that the paint is gonna stick. The odd time, you may see a little bit of lacing happen. So what that is, is when you apply it, you kind of see it separate immediately. Think of like putting oil on water and it just kind of like runs away. That's when you know there's something on that surface that needs to either be cleaned some more, or if you didn't clean it with odorless solvent, maybe there's a wax residue on there. Most of the time, if I put two coats of Ultra Grip with that lacing, by the time I put my second coat on, it's gone and the paint will adhere very, very, very well. Uh, so you can basically paint anything. And this um, Ultra Grip is kind of like, again, makes painting the impossible possible. Another way that you can apply Ultra Grip for a super smooth finish is actually by using a fine sponge like this. So I just dip the sponge into the Ultra Grip and then I just wipe it along the surface, putting a nice even coating across. This ensures that you're not going to have any brush strokes or any excess buildup. And you don't want to see much they're left behind. So that's it. Really super simple, really easy, quick way to apply the Ultra Grip and not have any brush strokes or buildup of texture. Once you've applied your first coat of Ultra Grip, that should be more than enough to then go ahead and use the paint. Now, if you're able to give it four to six hours to cure and dry, that is fantastic. That's gonna give you a great base. If you've got a surface that is super difficult, like the melamine thermofoil, I definitely recommend waiting about 12 hours if you can, because that's gonna give this Ultra Grip its time to cure. The way it cures is by water evaporating from the surface. So if you add a water-based paint onto it, you're basically adding more water to it, preventing it from curing and hardening. So again, if your surface is like very, very tricky and you're really worried about the paint adhering, then give it the full 12 hours if you can wait. 
I have definitely gone ahead and painted one to two hours after using Ultra Grip. If my humidity is really not too humid, so if it's pretty dry and I see it drying quickly, and this type of a surface, which is laminate, um, it's actually not too, too bad. But again, the higher the sheen, the glossier it is, the, like if you have an Ikea cabinet that is super shiny, definitely give it as much time as you can. Up to 12 hours is ideal for the best, best performance. And then yeah, one coat is typically enough. You can then go ahead and put your paint on any color that you like from Fusion Mineral Paint and uh, continue on with the project. Our piece has had a couple of hours to dry now. We applied one coat of the Ultra Grip and it's been about two hours and I can feel it's really dry, it's looking good. I'm really happy with it. If you can wait even longer, maximum up to 12 hours, that's even better for Ultra Grip. But one to two hours on a piece like this, it wasn't too shiny, it's a laminate, then we can get away with going ahead and putting our paint on pretty quickly. We're gonna go ahead and use a roller for this application. Since this surface is so smooth and flat, it's going to allow us to paint this piece really quickly and have zero brush strokes whatsoever. These rollers are the best rollers, hands down. They are a really very fine type of velour style roller here, and they feel so soft. They're absolutely beautiful to use. The great thing with this is you can reuse them over and over again, so you can wash them after, this is not a one and done. So they cost about six to seven dollars each and you can reuse them over and over again and uh, can't say enough about these. Love them so, so much. They come in two packs as well as 10 packs. So if you do a lot of painting, the 10 pack is a great value. Okay, we are gonna be using Hazelwood. I absolutely love this color. It is a neutral gray with just a hint of a brown tone to it. So instead of it being like a blue cool gray, it's a warm gray. It pairs so beautifully with all of our neutral colors, uh, off-white like raw silk or cashmere, any of those colors, super gorgeous. And we are gonna be using a stencil over top of this color with our smooth embossing paste, which is a pearl color. So you're gonna see such a great contrast. It's gonna look really beautiful. I do like to pour my paint into a, a tray when I'm using a roller. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that here. Then you can see the consistency of this is a little bit thicker. The consistency of all of our paints is a little bit different depending on the color. And some of them are really thin, some of them are a little bit thicker, but for the most part, they go on really, really smooth. But don't be alarmed if you see one is a little thicker than the other, totally fine, totally normal. And in fact, some of the paints are even lighter in weight. And that just comes down to the pigments that are in them because it's the pigments that add a lot of weight. So the lighter colors tend to be heavier than say the darker colors. It's, it's just uh, the way the pigments work. Okay, so rolling and then I wanna get the excess off the roller. You don't wanna have too much paint on your roller because you get a little bit of stippling if you have too much paint, even though this is a super fine quality ro uh, roller. I'm just gonna, if you ever feel that you have too much, you can just kind of wipe the excess off as well. That's one way to get the excess removed. All right, I will start on the front here. So I'll pull your drawers out so you can get all the way around and don't, pull, don't push them back in because you'll take the paint off the sides. I'm gonna start on the top here and then right on to the front. Really excellent coverage with this type of a color. I mean, you're probably looking at simply one coat here. I don't think we're gonna need a second coat, uh, especially with the roller. It puts it on so smooth and evenly that I don't think we're gonna need it. I wanna make sure you get this side as well. There we go. And I'll pull this one out. There we go. It's so easy and so fast to use a roller to get such a smooth finish. And we'll paint this whole piece in probably five minutes or less using a roller, which I just, I love it because it's so fast. There we go. And you notice I haven't dipped in again a second time yet for the paint because there's still quite a bit on this roller here. Very nice. Tuck that in a little bit. And I'll do the bottom one. Very straightforward, really easy to paint with this roller here. 
So if you're ever worried about painting and getting brush strokes, go ahead and use a roller. It just makes it so much easier. But you do need to get the right kind of roller. There are lots of other rollers out there on the market. There's foam rollers, there's microfiber rollers, you name it. And they will all give you a slightly different effect. I don't love the foam rollers because they tend to leave like a sponge effect and air bubbles, whereas this roller here basically leaves no lines at all. But good tip, don't put too much paint on the roller and you should have really good success. And you'll wanna leave the doors open, the drawers open so that they don't close uh, and get stuck or anything like that for a, a couple of hours if you can. If you can take them out completely and do this horizontally, that's even better, but these are stuck in here and they won't come out. Okay, I'll do the top. Again, loving the coverage. Super quality coverage with this color here. If you were doing, say, like a, a white or an off-white, you'd be looking at a couple of coats to cover a color like this, but not a big deal. Um, you know, two to three coats typically for a lighter color and a darker color, anywhere from one to two coats. There we go. So that's done nice and quick and easy. And we're having excellent adhesion. There's no lacing or lifting of the paint at all. That ultra grip has really made it so that the paint is adhering very, very well. There we go. Get right in there with that roller, perfect. And then smooth it out as you need to. Looking good. I've just finished applying my first coat and it looks like I'm only gonna need one coat of Hazelwood on this piece. And I had an idea. This is the stencil that we're gonna be using for the front, a lot of detail. It's gonna look so high end. It's not gonna look like you picked up this piece for 15 bucks and threw a stencil on it. It's gonna look like it's worth quite a bit of money. So I'm gonna run our smooth embossing paste through it, which is gonna give a raised pattern texture to the front of these drawers. Beautiful. Then what I decided is instead of going back with this sort of blah traditional hardware, I'm actually gonna fill these holes and I have a bunch of hardware sort of lying around. So I'm looking at the different options that I have here and I thought maybe going with some single individual knobs, maybe in the middle and changing the position of where the hardware is now. And I think given that the embossing paste is kind of an off-white pearl, I think I might go with this. This is a really sort of modern square piece of hardware. It's really gonna contrast beautifully against this really ornate and intricate design. I just, I can't wait. This is gonna be absolutely stunning. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit longer and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the smooth embossing paste on. But I'm going to fill these holes first and drill a new hole for the placement for our new hardware. Yay! Okay, so for the fill, I'm just using regular wood filler. You can grab this from any local hardware store. And if I can open it <laughs> with nails, always difficult. There we go. Okay. So just a little spatula. You want just a little bit of this on. It's dried enough that I'm not gonna have an issue with the paint here. And I'm just gonna fill the hole, even and smooth it out. As it dries, it goes lighter in color. So I'm gonna fill these guys, let it dry for about an hour or so, and then come back and put the stencil on with the embossing paste. Our hazelwood has now dried and it's time to apply our stencil and use our smooth embossing paste. This is an amazing product that is textured. You can get a smooth finish from it or you can create a textured finish, but you can get amazing raised patterns with it. So we're gonna take this stencil and put it right on top of the drawer front. So now that I have my stencil sitting here and taped on, as you can see, there's a little bit of wiggle room, so I'm really gonna wanna hold it down when I work with it so that it doesn't lift off. In fact, if you could take the drawer out and do it horizontally, that would be preferred. These, unfortunately, don't come out. I'm gonna use a spatula here, 
because it's gonna give me a lot of control. There we go. I'm gonna press my stencil down and I'm gonna just start to put the paste on it and press down firmly. There we go. And I'm gonna apply this across the whole stencil. This stencil has a lot of detail, so I'm really taking my time. When I did the reveal, I noticed that some of the embossing paste sort of seeped underneath. And that's because I was doing it vertically. So we've decided to change the angle. It's always better to do it working horizontally if you can. So for the camera, we're just gonna change the angles. I'm actually gonna remove what I did. So just using a wet cloth, the smooth embossing paste still um, is quite malleable. So no worries, you can actually wipe it off and start over, which is what we're gonna do. So don't panic. If it doesn't work out, you can always fix it. So I'm gonna remove that and we're going to redo the embossing paste. We have our water misters, so we can use that to sort of reactivate and remove. Or if you like how this looks, it's like a really uh, pearlescent, shimmer, so that's a really cool way of using embossing paste as well, is wetting it a little bit, thinning it out, and then using it as a shimmer pearl finish. And it's super hard and durable. Okay, so that's pretty much ready. Ready for round two. <laughs> We've removed all the embossing paste and we're gonna try again for round two. So the reason why we were doing it vertically was so we had the best camera angle, but that's not always the best for actually painting and finishing. So this is really the ideal way to do it, is laying down flat. Okay, so we're gonna add this paste on here and let gravity help us this way. So do hold your stencil down firmly and start to apply. I can already tell it's so much easier this way. And you just apply a little bit with the trowel and then pull. And a little goes a long way with the embossing paste. Now we just wanna lift straight up and off and see how it worked. It's looking good, yay! Success, success, okay, great. So definitely doing it horizontally, letting gravity work for you is the best way to apply this. And now we're gonna to wanna to let it sit and dry. It's gonna take about six hours or so to really dry and harden up and then we can go on and apply a wax or anything to really showcase and reveal this beautiful detail. And here we are with our beautiful embossing paste all dry. It took about six hours to dry. This is the next day though. I let it dry overnight. It is looking so good. So I put the, I was actually able to take the drawers out completely. I thought I wasn't able to, so I pulled really hard and they came out. So it was so much better. I actually did the embossing on its own, on its side. It was so much easier that way. Um, so I found this amazing hardware. It's actually stone and it matches the color so beautifully of the pearl embossing paste. So I thought this would be a really nice addition. Remember we had that old hardware that was plastic and silver. It just wouldn't go with the piece anymore. 
So I could paint that white, but I thought I grabbed these from the local home sense, really inexpensive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drill a spot here, put this in, and I think it really completes the look. All right, so grab my drill, line it up, maybe pull these down just in case. Okay. Awesome. Done. <laughs> so super simple. And then this can just slide right in. And of course, I'll put the washers on the back with the screw to hold it in place. But look at that. Really, really beautiful. And when I was able to take the drawers out, I actually painted the inside here that you could see before because I wasn't able to get them out. But now that I was able to, oh, it's so much better. So this piece went from sort of that orangey, generic desk style piece. I'm sure this used to be in an office somewhere, but now it looks like a super cute little bedside table. So I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna do a little something more to the top just to give it a bit of a frosting using this same product. The smooth embossing paste, you can tint it so you can make it a different color. You can brush it on, you can texturize with it. You can do so many different things with it. This I just ran through the stencil here and on top I'm gonna to use it as a frosting. So I'm gonna put a little bit on and then I'm gonna add some water and spread it around. It's gonna look like a beautiful frosting on top. All right, so I was gonna put a stencil and embossing on here on the top because there's some damage on it and I kinda of wanted to camouflage it, but I'm gonna try this instead. And that's the whole thing is like you can experiment, you can do things and if you don't love it, you can either remove it, paint over it, change it, no big deal. It's all about having fun with it. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the embossing paste. Don't need a lot. I'm gonna just sort of brush it on. I'm gonna take this water mister, so it's a continuous water spray mister, which is great because it means you get just enough. So you press it once, and then it kind of continues. And what we're doing is really thinning out this paste, and it's gonna make it look like a shimmer and frosting, which is really quite cute. There we go. Because it's wet, you got a lot of working time with it, you can kind of do it any direction you want and then smooth it out and even out after. And give a little mist just to keep it active, which means you can manipulate it for as long as it is wet. There we go. Yeah, it's cute. Kind of like changes the sheen just a little bit, increases it. You can put this over top of the, your whole piece. It kind of, it's like a way of using um, a metallic wax without waxing. So if you've already got this product, it's a really easy way to add a metallic pearl sheen to it. Very, very, very nice. And then of course, you can always take, take a rag and just kind of pull it back and see what that looks like too. There's really no rules for how to do this. Whatever you think looks best. And there we go. So it's just like a really nice light shimmer effect on the top. And then I might still go ahead and add a stencil over top of this damage here just to kind of um, camouflage it, add a little bit more. But again, that's the fun of the process is you can kind of play with it. There's no right or wrong way. You can layer so many different products on top of each other. As long as it's water-based products, you can put them over and over again. So um, unless you use a wax or an oil, those are always, waxes always last, and oil as well. You don't really wanna paint over oil, so that's pretty difficult to do. But look at that, you know, just adds a nice little shimmer, a nice little sheen. It looks really high end, really beautiful. I love how the front turned out with the hardware. This piece now looks completely different. I'm totally gonna to use this in my office. I really, really like it. I've fallen in love with it. I'm gonna sit with this for a while, see what I think of it. If I wanna add a little stencil just to camouflage that up, I might do that but I really love how it turned out. Please let us know what you think about this makeover in the comments and where do you see yourself using our smooth embossing paste? For more tutorials just like this one, be sure to subscribe to all of our social platforms. We're on Instagram, we're on Pinterest, we're on TikTok, you name it, plus our amazing YouTube channel that you're on right now. Thank you so much and can't wait to see you for the next one.